Hi, I'm Mike uh, with Utastic here again at SCNA. I'm sitting down with Colin Jones, uh, also known as Tripped Jones. Uh, TRPT Colin. TRP, uh, excuse me, TR, <laughs> Tripped Colin. It's one of those days. Uh, but uh, actually, uh, kind of a funny story of how, what does Tripped mean again? Um, he's Trumpet. 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 It's an abbreviation okay. for Trumpet. Yes, so he's a trumpeteer. Uh, but he's also a closurist. And uh, uh, he's the, the core maintainer of the, the closure Cohen's. Uh, so can you tell me a little bit, real quick, uh, for people who might not know, what is the closure cones again? Right, so the closure cones are a set of exercises um, that sort of walk you through the basics of the closure language. Um, they start from basically assuming no experience, um, teaching you like you know how the syntax looks and right. how different functions like equals, function application, you know, starting, starting at the very base level. And, Walking you up through knowing a little bit more about the language. You're not going to be a master when you finish. Through, but, but you're, you're going to at least know that you're going to have touched most of the major syntactical structures. And yep, like and you're going to sort of yeah. And, and the idea is for it to be very very stepwise and um, to teach you the closure language. Okay. And you know how did how did you have you always been into Lisp or how did you come to be involved with, with closure, uh, the cones? Right. So I think it was maybe like 2009, uh, like like mid 2009 or so. I've been seeing a lot of people talking mm -hmm. about. Lisp and uh, structure interpretations and computer programs. That that book from famous book from MIT. The SICP um, book. Right. Um, people talking on Twitter about how, how great that was and stuff. And I had never done any Lisp. I didn't come from a background in computers. Um, so I, I decided you know start learning some Lisp and um, along the way I, I heard about Closure. There was this like Lisp that was actually supposed to be um, you know useful in, in real life. Not that other Lisps are useful, Lisp. but like that, that was like the core. But it's, it's on the JVM, right. so it has the libraries and all that. Exactly, exactly. And that was just but you know the value proposition um, that I was presented with. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I, I was really interested, and we watched the the peep code that Phil Hakelberg put together and as a company, and then we went through Stuart Holloway's book, um, mm -hmm. uh, Programming Closure, I believe it's that one, not oh, that Closure Programming, the first, right. one. the first one that came out, right. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I was learning the language in that way, and then uh, Aaron Bedra um, from Relevance, um, formerly from Relevance, uh, now Groupon, um, put out a call on Twitter that, that he was starting this project called the Functional Cohen's, and he wanted mm -hmm. people to add things for Scala and F-sharp and Clojure and stuff mm -hmm. like that. I was like, huh, that might be an interesting way for me to contribute. Because I've, I've always been like interested in getting into open source software right. and um, contributing. But at that point, my Clojure knowledge was pretty small. Right. So I figured I'd you know, see what they had going on, and maybe I could sort of learn the language better by writing some of these small exercises. Right. So that was basically yeah, one of the big ways I learned the language. Trying to apply straight away in some big library, it's, it's your, actually, let's learn while we Great. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And I, I think that was still during my apprenticeship at 8th Light, so mm -hmm. I was sort of like um, very much in the mindset, and I still am but to some extent, but um, very much in the mindset of, okay, I'm, I'm just going to learn, like just learn things mm -hmm. um, about, about this new language. Um, so yeah, that, that was kind of the approach I took was just to, to learn about the language um, by, by writing elements right. of the Clojure Cones. And so I you know, sent Aaron a few pull requests, and he was kind enough to merge them in and give me some... Mm -hmm. um, um, you know, a, a step up there. Yeah, so, so he, he helped you learn a little bit better while you were contributing and building. Yeah, absolutely. And then eventually, like he, he, he got busy, and I, I was I was writing more than he was, and he just gave me the commit bit on the project, and yeah. things went from there. Yeah. So yeah, the the site was relaunched, and it's it's heavily. Uh, I mean, even the sites the the closure calling sites is written in judo. And, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. actually written in closure. We actually had. Um, this closurecohens.com is, is the place you can go to, to, to learn more about this and also the GitHub page, but um, closurecohens.com will link you to the GitHub page. Um, and uh, yeah, the it, site was actually done by, um, by an apprentice, Mark Grant, um, did most of the work on that, most of the design stuff, and then we had some more design apprentices come in and, and refine some of the design elements. Um, elements. Um, so yeah, it, it's been, been really great to see CC see, see go through an evolution um, and, and finally get launched publicly um, just, just a few weeks ago. So is, has it been something where, I, so you, you were able to come in and contribute and work with Aaron and get learning uh, from him. Has, has there been a lot of uh, people coming to the Closure Coins to learn Closure that you've been able to communicate with? Yeah, I, th I think um, I, I think that is the case. I, th I think we see a lot of people who, maybe people who have heard of the Ruby Coins before, which yeah. is kind of the inspiration for the Closure Coins. Um, but um, people who are familiar with the idea of using these sort of exercises as a way to learn 
um, looking for something like a, a Cohen's exercise. And I think by word of mouth, um, I see on Twitter a lot that people have, people go through them just you know with a group of people unfamiliar to language, yeah. and um, people seem to seem to enjoy them. So that's yeah. really um, gratifying. If, if you have you heard back from anybody who's gone from zero to you know, like actually able to use the language through the Collins? Yeah, I mean, no, I, I haven't heard it. I haven't had anybody like explicitly like email me and say, okay, you know, I started the Collins last year and um, now I'm writing production code. Yeah. Um, we've certainly had apprentices who have done that um, mm -hmm. at Eighth Light, but um, so so you're even using it internally as a teaching tool. Yeah, yeah. Generally, um, when, when we have an apprentice who we want to learn closure, mm -hmm. one of the first things we do, maybe not the first thing, depending on who they are, but. Um, yeah, we're, usually we'll recommend that they just go through the comments. I mean, it takes probably, you know, anywhere from like a focused two or three hours to like, you know, spaced out over the course of days or something like that. It's not a huge undertaking to complete these. Um, we're always adding more to them, so by the time you see this, you may... Uh, are you, are you taking patches and contributors? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Love, love getting patches. Um, gotten a lot of really great um, contributions, uh, people writing whole new files and on the on the GitHub site there's a there's an idea board for things that we want to implement, things we want to add as exercises, but we just haven't gotten around to it yeah. yet. And Aaron alluded to the fact that it's now more of a Cohen's engine now than like what 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 does that mean? That's right. So Sam Rishi from Twitter had um, he works on the Cascalog project. Cascalog is mm -hmm. like a, a sort of um, closure interface to cascading which um, Closure interface and sort of logic engine around right. cascading, which is a Hadoop thing, um, but it's this really awesome um, thing that they that they're working on. Um, and he wanted to use something like the Cohen's to help people learn Casclog. Right. Um, so he extracted the, the bits of the Closure Cohen site that were you know dedicated to making them work. He extracted those from the um, the actual exercises themselves. Right. Um, the cells and. Um, so yeah, he put in a ton of great work on those. So th those are those are ripped out. So now people can you know write closure Cohen's for um, not just closure the language for people to learn things you know core dot logic, core dot mash, all kinds of um, closure libraries. We haven't seen you know a ton of people using it. I know Casablog yeah. using it. Those two libraries I mentioned. Um, but yeah, we'd love to see. But more. to see somebody like see what you worked on. So you handed it. You know, kind of took it over from Aaron worked on it and then somebody else saw it and said, hey, I can make it better and I contributed it, contributed to the project and now it's just better. You know? yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's one of the great things about GitHub and open source software in general, um, mm -hmm. to see that kind of thing. And just something that's more context-based, earlier uh, Corey Foy was talking about the progression of using some of these tools, the concepts mm -hmm. of a kata. Uh, it's basically an exercise of, that you just repeat over and over and over again. Uh, versus Cohen's, and uh, where Cohen's are very out of context. You're just writing a data structure. Uh, you know, is that something that you might have seen? Because I've worked with uh, mentoring people where I gave them the Cohen's first, thinking that that was a great thing, but they didn't have the context. Yeah, and I think there's a lot of people who who do, it, it, the the Cohen's way of thinking about you know here's the syntax one of the language you have to be motivated in a very specific way I think and and it's sort of the way I learn is to think about syntax and all the bits and stuff and I I'm already I already want to learn the language for something mm -hmm. um, but there's lots of people who, who prefer to learn the language by um, and I, I, t I was talking to a guy yesterday who, who was writing a closure service now and he, he just really likes just jumping into an app yeah. and um, having you know having all the all the context as you said. Um, there for him, right? He wants to know the reason he's he's writing these things, um, and and he's not really necessarily interested in in learning for the sake of learning the language itself, but he, he wants to to use it immediately to do things. Um, and I think that's really, I mean, different learning styles. Right, it's yeah, really interesting how people. But it, it's just one more tool in the in the toolbox that people can pull from. Sure. Yeah, well, absolutely. thank you very much for uh, working on closure cones and for speaking with me today. Absolutely, my pleasure.